Department of Administration. He holds a Juris Doctorate doctor degree from the University of Wisconsin Law School, a master's degree in international affairs from Columbia University, and a bachelor's degree in political science and philosophy from McAllister College. Welcome, Secretary, Deputy Secretary. Uh, it's Sam, but thank you. I'm really happy to be with you guys today. Oh, great. So a few housekeeping items before we jump into our conversation. Um, I'll kick off with a few questions. As you are thinking of questions you'd like to ask the Deputy Secretary, uh, please put those into the chat function located below. This will help us keep our conversation moving and prevent some of the challenges that uh, occur when you meet virtually. So let's get going. All right. So uh, Sam, this is the first time some of us have met you. First time I've spoken to you directly. Why don't you give us some of your background and your role at WEDC? Sure. Uh, thanks for letting me be here, Jimmy. This is great. Um, as, as you mentioned, I've been at WEDC as a CEO and deputy for uh, since early November 2019. And, and I recently moved back uh, to Wisconsin. I was at the University of Wisconsin-Madison for a while leading a STEM education initiative. But I'd recently come from Washington where I spent uh, probably about two and a half, three years leading something called the Rural Business Cooperative Service at USDA. And that's the arm of USDA that supports rural um, non-ag businesses. And so I um, uh, was a commercial lawyer before that. Um, and so I'm really happy to be home. I grew up in a little town outside of Madison, Stoughton, if folks know it. Um, uh, and so uh, part of my family is from Wapun originally, not too far from the uh, Fox Cities, at least up that way from where I am in Madison. Um, and um, as Deputy uh, Secretary and COO, I am uh, neck deep in a ton of our program work, um, a ton of our uh, administrative work. Uh, we have budgets going on and we are currently involved not only in sweeping all of our dollars from FY20 and figuring out what's the best and highest use of those dollars that were available from WDC state funding we had from this fiscal year now, but we're now engaged um, uh, with and working with the governor's office and DOA to take CARES Act funding uh, that has come through a total of $1.9 billion that has come through um, the state and into at least some target to small businesses. And uh, we are trying and a team of about 110 to 115 folks at WDC deployed all over the state to do so in a way that has the biggest impact we can have uh, to do so responsibly, but also to make sure that we're reaching out and targeting the uh, businesses that are falling through some of the cracks and gaps of the funding right now. We, we, we're looking at the what is for WDC, a really large, large um, uh, fund that um, I'll get into it in a bit, which is a $75 million grant program uh, to small businesses. And putting that into perspective, that to date, the federal SBA dollars that have come into Wisconsin small businesses to date have totaled more than uh, $10 billion. Uh, and so when we look at 100 million uh, being so much, or 75 million being a massive amount of money, we recognize just the, just the just huge impact of COVID-19, the pandemic, it's, it's less than 1% of the dollars that have already flooded into Wisconsin and are really just helping keep businesses alive. But fortunately, we're all starting back up again. So that's what I've been busy with. It's a lot, a lot has gone on in the last couple of months. Um, I kind of wanted to dive into some of those programs that sure. you know, you're, you're looking at. Fund. So uh, WDC has been really responsive to the pandemic and creating a lot of new either financial assistance programs, the guidelines that a lot of our businesses are using to reopen right now. Um, I hope you can kind of walk us through some of those opportunities. And, and the first one, you know, you kind of touched on already, the $75 million grant opportunity. I believe it's called We're All In. Yes. Um, can, right. you, can you kind of, you know, eligibility, what kind of the program, what that's used for? Happy to. Um, so the uh, We're All In grant was announced eight days ago by Governor uh, and Secretary Hughes. Um, it is federal dollars that are flowing through the state to WDC and to small businesses. Um, and so the, um, uh, they, the uh, program is intended for uh, Wisconsin small businesses, uh, 20 or fewer FTEs. Um, and the reason why is we know that those businesses, we believe, are the businesses that are um, have fallen through uh, most likely of some of the federal funding cracks that are out there. Um, let me just quickly hit on some of the eligibility requirements. Um, 
uh, you have to be a for-profit business. Um, as I mentioned, 20 or fewer FTEs. And let me, let me just stop there for a minute um, and make sure folks don't hear that as 20 or fewer um, employees. We know there are a lot of res uh, Wisconsin restaurants and retailers and other service industries that might have uh, in, uh, more than 20 employees, but a lot of those employees are part-time employees. So a business that has uh, 10 full-time staff but uh, 20 half-time staff would also uh, um, qualify because they would be uh, up to 20 uh, um, full-time FTEs, if that makes sense. Um, the, those businesses that are eligible would have either uh, the, um, uh, greater than zero but less than a million dollars in annual revenues. Um, and they need to be businesses that were in operation in February 19. And I'll talk about some of the documents that uh, we'll announce more publicly uh, to really verify a number of things. But um, uh, we want to make sure that we're not um, uh, giving those $2,500 grants to businesses that may have been in business and filed a tax return in 18 or 19, but in the interim uh, um, went out of business. And so um, uh, those are some of the main eligible um, uh, el eligibility requirements. I'll just add that um, if the um, business is available or is eligible for another um, type of CARES Act funding that might be going through DATCAP, for instance, um, they would not be eligible for this. So if you are a uh, um, agricultural producer, a farmer, um, there'll be programs through DATCAP uh, for you. That's the Department of Ag and Consumer Protection at the state level for you. Um, but generally, most and almost all other small businesses are eligible to apply. Um, if you have 20 or fewer FTEs, um, uh, but you are a part of a corporate chain, then you wouldn't be eligible. Um, you might, however, uh, be a third party franchisee uh, if the um, business owner is a franchisee but uh, owns it, that doesn't make that business ineligible. And so there are a number of documents that um, on the very simple online application that will be live in uh, early to mid June and we'll have details on that. We have a governance system at WDC. We just went through a subcommittee that approved the guidelines this morning. We'll have full board approval next week, but we'll be getting more of those details out about um, when the window for application in June will be open. It'll be a week-long application, and we'll let businesses know in advance of that week-long window of application what very basic materials that they'll have to have ready to apply um, uh, so that they can have those documents ready to upload in the online portal. One of the lessons we learned is that the way that the federal support went out um, went out on a first come first serve basis. And that created a huge amount of to make sure that they got their application in the door immediately open because the, then the funds were gone. Uh, we're operating it as a, win, as a window of eligibility. So the window for application will be open for one week in June uh, and then it will close. And so there won't be the stress uh, of, of making sure that you're the, sitting there on Monday morning getting your application. Do you expect uh, that one week window that you'll have enough applications for the entire 75 million? That's a good question. Um, at $2,500 grants, those 30,000 grants, and um, based on Department of Revenue data, um, we estimate that there are roughly, nine, well, there are at least 98,000 qualifying uh, and eligible businesses in Wisconsin, give or take a, um, a thousand or two. But um, uh, part of our job uh, and part of your job, and that's why we're always delighted to uh, plug in and check in with groups like yours, is to make sure we're getting the word out so businesses don't miss that window. Yeah, the, uh, the funds, can it be used for uh, general working capital funds or needs or any restrictions? Absolutely. No, uh, no restrictions at $2,500. The last thing that we as the uh, quasi state government um, want to do is get in the way of figuring, telling a business that we know um, uh, how they're going to use that, those, those, those dollars best. Um, where certainly the, the uh, program is designed that these funds will support a business who is, uh, or which is trying to cover those funds to start back up, whether that's to buy their inventory that they need as they're ramping back up. Perhaps a business uh, needs to buy added PPE or plexiglass for their business to operate safely. Perhaps they need to do a bunch of other things. Well, certainly there's a design to make sure that's for inventory, those things. Perhaps they need to float payroll 
for a week and that 2,500 bucks can help do that uh, while they're waiting for the cash flow to come back into their business. Um, so there'll be guidelines, but there'll be no legal requirements on that use. Any reporting requirements? Yeah, good question. Um, uh, each business um, that receives a grant um, will receive a survey uh, later this year, months afterwards. We're not going to bother them in the height of COVID, um, but they'll be required to just submit a very simple survey. That survey will just ask them to affirm uh, that they use the money and briefly describe uh, the, the broad general uses of that money. Would an owner be eligible to apply for more than one small business that they own? Yes. Okay, wonderful. Um, if anyone has any questions, uh, please remember the chat form below. Uh, you can enter them in there. Um, Sam, another uh, initiative that you guys worked on uh, right right away is the the Small Business 2020 program. Um, can you give us an update and you know explain that what that program was for and how it was uh, how the dollars were released? Yes, I'm happy to. So. This is well before, um, this was at the, this was in mid-March. Uh, literally, this is before I believe um, the Safer at Home order was in place, but we knew that this was coming and we could hear from the business community that um, uh, what sort of impact this was gonna have. Um, it was a program that we used just left over. I, I, I mentioned that the, as we were closing in, our fiscal year ends at the end of June. And we're looking at, um, guess what we're not doing? We're certainly not doing a lot of travel, right? There are certain programs and awards that are not happening because uh, businesses aren't moving forward with some programs. Um, there are events that we're not holding. So there are lots of ways that we're able to look, how can we save dollars and really tighten our belt uh, for the balance of this fiscal year so we can figure out ways to deploy every dollar we can to get in the hands of businesses so they can get through this problem. And so this challenge. And so Early on, we were able to deploy $5 million into a small business grant program. If WBDC has to deploy the dollars itself, it just takes a long time to get up a whole application system to vet all those applications. And so one way that we're able to accelerate our ability to get dollars in the hands of businesses who need it are to find really strong partners we can work with. Oftentimes those partners are lenders because lenders have really great relationships with those clients. They're able to assess which clients are, are viable businesses that they're able to, you know, in working with them, vouch for their viability. The network of uh, community development financial institutions across Wisconsin, they're lenders who are lending to some of our more vulnerable businesses. Uh, and they were our channel in that initial $5 million SB 2020 program. And so as of last week, we uh, sent out the last check and we did so in a number of draws to um, CDFIs, Wisconsin CDFIs, uh, who had um, um, businesses that were in good standing on their loans with those CDFIs, it again, had less than 20 or less employees uh, to deploy those dollars. And those dollars uh, went out, um, the last check has gone out to the CDFIs and are currently being deployed now across the state. And they have, I think the lion's share are out I don't yet have the reporting back from the CDFI, so I can't give you final numbers of how many businesses, but one of the upsides that we saw in that, and this is just a testament to CDFIs and how they operate and their commitment to their mission, is that um, they had an ability to um, take their allotment of grant and, uh, and re-grant that to number of businesses up to $20,000 grants. Uh, what we're seeing is that they were a lot more um, uh, um, modest in the grants that they were giving out to businesses. And so I think the average grant is somewhere between maybe four and $6,000 going out to businesses like that because their ability to use their allotment of grant dollars and get and spread that around to as many small businesses um, is really great. One of the questions that would likely follow up, what if you are a business that received an SB 2020 grant? Are you eligible for that other grant program that I just talked about, the We're All In grant program? You are still eligible, uh, but the We're All In grant program will provide some priority, some weight to those businesses that did not receive any state or federal tax, uh, so, or, uh, uh, federal assistance, um, but they won't be ineligible from applying. Would a local revolving loan fund be weighted in that, Sam? We administer two local yeah. revolving loan no. funds. So we have a lot of businesses that have taken no. loans out with us, low interest loans. 
We won't even ask. If won't even ask. Businesses, business, I mean, listen, the $2,500 grants that we're going to be able to give out, uh, that we're going to administer on behalf of the federal government, um, a $2,500 grant is not going to make or break a business, right? Right. And so if you're a business, you're going to be looking for all sorts of ways that you're going to be able to cobble together resources to get through this, get back on your feet. So whether it's through your revolving loan fund with your lender from your brother or through a grant program, a small grant program that the state is operating, or perhaps you've applied to the federal government SBA and got received money there. That's a savvy business that's just trying to scrape and scrap to get through this. Wonderful. Um, so kind of off the financial assistance track, WDC has been really great about um, providing information and, and resources and the Focus Forward uh, initiative that has uh, recently come about, I think is a great opportunity for any business leader, or anyone interested in being a, a, you know, in business uh, to, to kind of learn more and, and, and hear from other business leaders. So can you explain a little bit what the focus forward and, and how uh, people on the call could uh, receive information about that? Yeah, I think what I'd really recommend folks do is head to our website, wdc.org, uh, um, and then you'll find, I think it might be slash focus forward. Um, what we what we realize is, is that um, there's just um, we we feel as a WDC things are moving so fast and yet we all know in in this quarantine COVID life um, it often feels like moving so fast and days feel so long and so uh, the ability to figure out whether you're getting the right information about programs about opportunities um, we wanted to make sure we had a specific channel so to speak at WDC. It's speaking to a number of different opportunities um, or resources that are available for business all across Wisconsin. And so if you head to WDC's website, uh, wdc.org, you'll be able to register um, uh, for our Focus Forward campaign, essentially, and you will receive a regular updates when there are new resources or information available. Wonderful. I, I, I strongly recommend that folks on this call uh, sign up for those, that information. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll just I'll just add, um, Secretary Hughes. If you haven't had a chance to meet her, work with her, I encourage you to do so. She's was in the dairy business for 17 uh, years with uh, um, Organic Valley, and while we want to make them as professional um, as, as as possible, the content uh, um, that is on a focus forward is is not whitewashed. That is, it is we 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 want to make sure that we're providing. Uh, the very information that um, businesses need and we're sharing with the business community across Wisconsin um, the real deal of what we're hearing and we're reacting to that at least that's our attempt and we're trying to achieve that wonderful um, uh, something that we're fairly familiar up here um, the Wisconsin supplier network uh, kind of originated it did originate from from New North and then yep. uh, went statewide uh with the uh with the whole transition or with the uh, foxconn meeting suppliers and things like that and now i think we're looking at that that uh, database or that website a little bit differently now uh, i know we received a lot of phone calls about plexiglass and face shields and pve and, and things like that um how has wdc kind of leveraged that network to help the businesses in the area, you know, find find those vendors so that they can continue on operating in a healthy way. Yeah, um, you're right. Um, so Wisconsin Supplier Network is uh, a website. Everyone should put that in your Google bar, your Google bar, your uh, and check it out. Um, it indeed was and is a. It it remains a place where uh, Wisconsin suppliers can put their, their, what they're offering up on a platform that OEMs are able to look at that platform and say, hey, I'm looking for a supplier in this field and find out what they can uh, find locally. Uh, it was a place, a meeting place virtually and uh, well before COVID where, where um, uh, we saw from your example, right, where the New North really got this going and said, well, God, that not that how, I, I always think of democracy this way, with business solutions this way. They don't usually and uh, um, often happen, they're coming the best ones from Madison or from Washington. The really cool ideas are happening locally. And then if you have a responsive, smart uh, leadership, 
they're like, well, great, we want to grab that, steal it, and, and keep expanding it. And so um, as that's been expanding, the Wisconsin Supplier Network, concurrently, uh, what had been happening at the State Emergency Operations Center, uh, run by uh, uh, um, uh, Governor's Office together with our team, our National Guard team, uh, they have been for the last two, three months, ever since we were dealing with COVID-19 and, and all of the public health uh, needs of our of our businesses, but importantly, our hospitals, making sure that we have the right masks, the right equipment, as you point, that we're getting in the supplies. Uh, they had had a database pulling together, connecting Wisconsin businesses who were raising their hand, saying, I think I can take my vodka distillery and start manufacturing sanitizer. Or I think I can pivot my uh, small manufacturing facility, uh, I don't know a group uh, in Dane County, and begin making uh, medical grade, um, those masks, those heavy duty uh, masks that our healthcare providers are wearing. Um, and so we started seeing that and, that and that information started collecting at SEOC, but we were afraid that it would sit there and, and die a slow, dark death. Because uh, the SEOC, we hope, isn't part of our daily life in, 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 in months to come. But what we do know is that businesses, as they're coming back online, as we're turning the dial back on, they want to make sure that they're keeping um, their customers, uh, their employees, their community members safe. And so they're looking, well, I want to do that. I want to make sure I'm getting the sanitizer, the equipment, the face mask to protect everybody because having all of those materials allow me to open my door, do so perhaps at a, at a social distance, but with those safeguards that I can keep doing what I'm supposed to do, which is manufacture widgets or sell those widgets, whatever you do. Um, and, you know, we've heard some crazy stories of folks that went out to buy the large um, uh, um, bulk size of sanitizer and it's gone up by, you know, 300% uh, in price. And if, sure, there are a lot of business owners on this uh, call and they've probably been maybe seeing some of that. So not having the purchase power or the sophistication of where to go other than go to Amazon and figure out where you can buy the supplies you need. And so we've taken the information that we've gathered at the State uh, Emergency um, Operations Center and transferred that over to the Wisconsin Supplier Network. So when you go there, you will find, uh, and we've been highlighting it right now on the, on the landing platform of the Wisconsin Supplier Network, the link to the new tab, which is where businesses can find Wisconsin-based companies that are manufacturing and selling uh, the PPE needed, um, or even putting up PPE services, so to speak. So there, there are businesses providing sanitizer, uh, making masks, other sorts of uh, making plexiglass, but you also have businesses that are offering uh, really deep cleaning services or other ways that businesses can think about how to make sure that they're operating in a way that's safe for their employees and customers. So head there, check it out. Yeah, it's a great resource. And it also reminds us that uh, buying our supplies locally is really important, especially right now. Uh, because you could go to Amazon, it might be it might be easier, but it doesn't support your neighbor or uh, the state of Wisconsin. So let's try to keep yep. our, our purchasing uh, here as locally as possible. Um, so many of our businesses are, are already utilizing and following the guidelines, uh, the reopening guidelines that WBC has put out. Um, and they've been really, really helpful and have answered a lot of questions and allowed our businesses to reopen while maintaining a protective layer for the health of their employees and their customers. Can you tell us how those guidelines uh, came about, what kind of resources you considered while they were being created? Sure. Um, just quickly on the background, uh, for well over a month, maybe five weeks ago, six weeks ago, WDC, we're not the public health experts, but we've been talking with our state public health experts on a, on a daily basis. And we knew from the stories we've been hearing from our businesses, how tough it has been, um, whether or not businesses are not operating at full scale because we're under a safer at home order, um, or they're not operating because um, uh, folks don't feel safe to go out and they're protecting their public safety, their social distancing, we knew that one of the things we needed to do was to provide um, the guidelines uh, that they could follow. Um, they're, they're dealing with enough to figure out all the steps they have to do to stay safe. And by having those guidelines out and by following those guidelines, we know that uh, customers begin to feel safe. And so our first step was to recognize that there were already 
business associations all across the country and across our state that were beginning to put forth guidelines for their industry. And that made a ton of sense. And we recognize that, uh, gosh, it certainly makes a lot of sense for, for a um, uh, um, centralized place where any business could go uh, to find the reopening guidelines as opposed to go searching on the internet. Why is that guideline good for me or should I go somewhere else? Um, and so what we did is we first went to businesses and we went to business associations and learned from them. And at WDC, we're the ones who put together, I'll, I'll say the first draft of our general guidelines and our uh, then our industry specific guidelines. But then we recognized a couple of things. We recognized there are other state agencies that uh, on a regular basis really have a lot to do with making sure businesses operate safely. One example is the Department of Agriculture uh, and Trade and Consumer Protection. I didn't know it until uh, the last several months, but they're the government agency that has all the health and safety regulations and monitors uh, restaurants, for instance. And so um, we made sure to touch base with our state government partners um, who are um, uh, really thinking on a regular basis about the health and safety of different businesses. We went to the Department of Tourism. They have been working with lodging facilities and others on tourist uh, operations um, to make sure that they had in input because what we're trying to talk to as many business uh, groups, as many businesses, we know that our other state uh, agencies are also talking to other businesses all the time. Um, and so we did that. And then finally, we took that set of guidelines that we've centralized them, uh, uh, kind of formatted them away. I think they're pretty user friendly, but we had to make sense that they're uh, to make sure that they are consistent with our state's public health experts, because that's the biggest challenge we're facing. So we brought in Department of Health Services. Um, they added really some key, key um, consistency to them. So there's not, um, there's not a set of guidelines that, that says one thing for business A and another thing for business B, but business A and B in terms of uh, how they operate are not that uh, dissimilar. Um, and so that was the process. We were, felt um, we were fortunate that we were able to um, uh, have these guidelines available before uh, the governor's safer at home order uh, um, was um, uh, removed by the Supreme Court. So uh, while um, WDC and personally, I thought that uh, it would have been nicer to have a bit more con uh, consistency in order to get kind of the measured pace of the phase space of reopening. When we did reopen, uh, um, we had those guidelines up. Uh, and I guess the last point I'll add to those guidelines, well, let me just say, if you haven't checked them out, they're at wdc.org forward slash reopen dash guidelines. There's a set of general guidelines uh, for all businesses. We have those uh, in English, Spanish, and Hmong. Um, but then you'll find um, subsector guidelines for agriculture, child care centers, construction, entertainment, and amusement. It's always an example. Uh, um, Senator Fitzgerald was talking to uh, Secretary Hughes and uh, I, I don't know, I love to bowl myself. And so I think he said, well, how about bowling? And uh, Missy came to me and said, hey, Sam, do we have something for bowling? And fortunately, it was a call out, at, especially for bowling uh, alleys, right, in the entertainment and amusement. And that's one of the things we learned is that while you might see a lot of uh, um, uh, some of the same guidance um, in the different sector specific guidelines, if I'm a, a hair salon or nail salon, uh, if I'm, um, uh, if I offer professional services, I'm a restaurant, it's really helpful, even if there's some duplication to know that there is a set of guidelines for me and my uh, business. And these are a living um, uh, set of guidelines. And I, when I say living, um, so when they first got them published, we've added probably six or seven because folks have provided really valuable feedback and said, you know what, uh, I know there's a lot of similarities with a guideline A versus B, but in my business, it's, it's kind of unique. And so I really think it'd be helpful for me in my industry if we had our own industry specific guidelines. Um, and we also know that those guidelines as the uh, uh, lay of the land on our public health challenge changes, that they it will also likely change. I think in that respect too, not only will we have been adding uh, more guidelines as the time goes on, we are ready to adapt those guidelines as the nature of our of the COVID infection changes on the ground. Thank you for that. I know a lot of our businesses have uh, really utilized those guidelines and have um, 
structured their businesses differently have done i mean COVID has been great in some ways that we've figured out how to do things in a different way and some and sometimes it's been better and, and sometimes we need to go back to the old way um but a lot of our businesses um have decided that uh their public public health is the number one concern um and that they can open up safely or in a healthy way um and still continue to provide the services and uh, provide the community with with what they do best, right? Whether it's make a widget or sell the widget or entertain. Uh, so we're really appreciative of those guidelines and all the work that WEDC has done to put those out there and to and to really promote the use of those of those guidelines. Um, Good, and just know that they are, as I said, a living document. And so if you, your membership, sees ways we can improve those um we can expand those we're all ears oh well we will we will definitely be speaking up if we see great ways for improvement i kind of wanted to kind of shift unless we have remember uh if we have questions from from the audience please use the chat function if i didn't bring something up that you're really interested in hearing more about please feel free to to use that chat function um i just have a couple more questions uh but i wanted to kind of shift all right, so uh, eventually uh, we're gonna get back to normal, right? Businesses are gonna be fully open. The guidelines are gonna help us to get to a point where um, public health is uh, not as big of a concern, right? You know, hopefully uh, the number of cases of COVID go down and it becomes undetectable. Um, what, uh, what we've seen during un certain times of uncertain times of either high unemployment, which we're around 14% right now statewide, um, is that a lot of entrepreneurialism tends to come out of that. Uh, and, you know, people, when they have time, they think of innovative ways to do things better. Uh, and they think of new business plans, new business ideas. What resources are available at WDC for those who are, who are sitting at their homes thinking, you know what, I have this great idea, I can start up a company, and I can really take this idea to the next level? Uh, that's a great question, Jamie. Um, it, just this morning through a subcommittee, uh, we approved, um, it'll go through the board next week, but um, uh, WIVIC, um, you guys know WIVIC, I'm sure uh, it's an important CDFI. Um, there, what, what WC is not doing is WC is not stopping our investment in startup businesses. So we, um, WIVIC applied for uh, one of our energy innovation uh, divisions, um, seed accelerator programs. Um, it's, it's a way that uh, um, uh, intermediaries like WIDIC uh, can, can see new ventures, small businesses with new ideas. Uh, we do that uh, with a lot of partners around the state. Um, uh, we run a program called the QNVB business, which is a, a way that businesses who are, have a startup uh, that as a, a new technology startup, they're able to uh, um, apply to WDC and get certified as a QNVB business, uh, a qualified uh, new venture business, where they're seeking investment, um, equity investment from investors uh, to really, really launch their new idea. And they're able to offer, if they get certified, that um, their investors are able to receive a tax credit when investing in a Wisconsin startup. And so one of the important things that uh, the governor and secretary Hughes and I have really are, are committed to is as we're, you know, the, the $2,500 grant program to 30,000 business, $75 million, that's it. That, even though that's less than 1% of all federal assistance that's come in, we know that that, that, that is critical to supporting existing Wisconsin businesses but we need to maintain a, a real great attention on that pipeline of startup businesses while we're addressing um, the businesses that are bleeding so, um, so, so profusely right now. And I just say to you, that's hard, right? Because um, when, when, when you have a patient lying on the table that's gushing blood, if you're a doctor, uh, and you have someone who's about to, or, or maybe thinking about, they're not even ready to give birth to the new child, right? But they're like maybe in for some, you know, family planning lessons that how they can like think about, you know, having a child. Like, where do you put your attention? Do you put it to the, to the, the patient that's sitting on the operating bed bleeding and you got to stitch up a hole? Or do you, or do you focus on, on, the, on the pipeline of startups? And while um, we are spending a lot of time, really, a lot of our bandwidth is going to the impact of businesses 
it is not at the expense of that pipeline of startups. So there are existing programs we have, and um, it is our hope and belief that um, with the um, uh, dollars, the federal CARES Act dollars that are coming into the state for small business support, while it hasn't been announced yet, only the $75 million small grant program to existing businesses has been announced. I expect, but don't have details on, on, on additional investments in and programs to make sure that we're um, continuing to support the pipeline of new businesses. Well, that's, that's good to know because I've yeah. uh, heard personally of, of, of a handful of people that are, that are looking to make that jump, um, mostly because they're uncertain about the recovery and how the economy is going to um, react uh, for the long term. Um, that kind of leads me into my final question, uh, and then I'll, I'll give you a chance to address anything that I may have uh, not brought up that you wish to. But, um, <clears throat> you know, 14% unemployment, uh, and we're all hoping that the recovery is V shaped, uh, maybe U shaped, but definitely not L shaped. Um, does the state have a recovery plan uh, that, you know, can get us back on track? I mean, this is a really, this is a really different situation, right? This is this is caused by a public health issue, not a, a really a downturn in the economy. So I don't know how you plan for that, but is there some kind of plan in place, recovery plan um, at the state level? Yeah, it's a great question. And I'm not going to have the written out um, academic sure. essay with my report today. We are indeed putting together that very report uh, due to um, our legislature on June 30th. So in the COVID relief bill that the legislature uh, passed and signed by the governor. Uh, the legislature um, um, directed WDC to, to prepare a report that we're working on. Curiously, when the, when the legislature tells you that they need something from you, you snap to attention pretty quickly, right? Because they're your uh, board of supervisors, so to speak, in large part. They at least pay, pay a lot of, uh, they, they're your parent who's given your allowance to do, try and do things with. Um, so we are in the middle of putting that together. I'll first answer your question by saying about 10 days, two weeks ago, Secretary Hughes and I had the privilege of sitting down. She, she was in a meeting with um, UW-Madison Chancellor Becky Blank. Becky Blank um, came back to Wisconsin after uh, leading the, uh, helping lead the Department of Commerce uh, in Washington. Um, and she's, like I said, a trained economist. She pulled together uh, four or five um, uh, uh, professors um, from the business school um, that were economists and their um, they we just had a chance to talk I mean it's a really cool job because when do you when do you get the audience of someone saying yeah I'll pull together our best and brightest from our state's flagship university and they'll just give you their their thoughts for an hour and a half um, one of the um, uh, one of the I mean not that I didn't know it but it was it was profound that no one there thought this was gonna be over by the end of the summer, right? There was a pretty broad agreement that this was the, certainly we've all heard it, the uh, deepest and most severe um, economic hit we've taken since the Great Depression, if not before. Um, and, no one, and, and no one could predict, and no one was willing to be so bold to predict how it would end, but they all said it will be, um, nine, 12 months, 24 months. And so it's a really good question. So then how does a state with limited resources, uh, knowing that it is part of a puzzle that the federal government is also putting together a plan in with very different level of resources at its hand, um, and, 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 and what do you do? What we have done uh, um, initially, at least, uh, provide some, some uh, uh, foreshadowing to what we'll do now, which is um, focus uh, our recovery efforts on, on who's falling through the gaps, right, of the federal efforts, the, 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 the federal plan. And, and that really has come to um, small businesses is where our focus has been at WDC. And I don't expect that's going to change in the near future. And it's not because uh, big businesses aren't critical to Wisconsin's economy. But it's more likely the case that the level of support that they'll need at a large business, uh, think of a, you know, a, a, uh, a um, think of Kimberly Clark, right? Think of the Kohler company. Like they're obviously they're they, they are hit too. Um, uh, um, uh, uh, but but the type of resources that we have available 
aren't going to even start to um, scratch uh, or, or, or deal with the, the, the hits that larger businesses might take. So I think what we've done so far is what we'll do for the um, foreseeable future is where can the dollars that we do have, where can they really make an impact? And so those are going to be on our smaller businesses, our businesses um, in those parts of our state that perhaps are not from a county that has as uh, resilient of, a, of, of an economy as other parts of the state. So um, uh, Secretary Hughes and I have both spent a lot of time thinking about rural parts of our state and how um, COVID-19 has particularly impacted those communities that unlike businesses in Dane County, right, in Madison where I am now, there's a pretty robust, uh, diverse set of businesses um, that really um, makes that region of the state uh, better off when it's dealing with something like this. If you're from a, industry, a part of this state that all you have is tourism, um, the, the paper industry or, or the logging industry, right, it's going to be even tougher for you. So I guess all I'll tell you is that um, one of the driving uh, kind of lenses we're looking at is, is where can the support that we're offering uh, uh, go deepest and provide the biggest bang for its buck? Well, we certainly uh, uh, appreciate all the work that's being done to, for that plan and all the work that you and Secretary Hughes and everyone at WDC, uh, John and Alita in our region have been phenomenal with providing resources um, it just uh, it, there's a there's a lot of work that has gone in the last uh, two almost three months. Um, so we appreciate everything uh, everything you've done to to help the business community. Anything that uh, that you wanted to bring up that I uh, forgot neglected to ask about? Uh, I think you guys have had your barber shops open uh, more recently than Dane County, so I'm due for that. I may have to make a trip up. Uh, my my. Uh, uh, girlfriend's family is from Denmark, Wisconsin, so I'd have to pass right through you, uh, whichever, which, whichever way I go. So maybe send a recommendation for a good barber. I, could, I, I would be needed right now, but no, there's nothing else right now. You know what? Let me go back to that. There are, um, today is the last, one of the grant programs you didn't ask about um, has a grant window closing today. So uh, when, before we knew about the federal grant funding, uh, available coming through, that's the We're All In uh, grant program. Uh, we took $5 million and capitalized the SB 2020 grant. We also started to hear about um, uh, businesses who are owned by folks of color in Wisconsin, um, uh, really the micro businesses that didn't have established relationships with lenders, being businesses that are were following through those cracks of SBA's PPP and EIDL programs. And so uh, four weeks ago, we announced the program, the Ethnic Minority Emergency Grant Program, uh, it's a small grant program. We had $2 million for it. It was uh, operating with only um, uh, $2 million um, at small grants. It's been open for a week and its grant window closes today. It's a very simple uh, grant uh, uh, online application that asks essentially for um, uh, your 2018 or 19 tax return, um, uh, the fact that some proof of, of, of evidence that you were in business in February uh, as well as one other document, um, at your, uh, and, 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 that's, and that ends tonight at midnight. So if you happen to know of any um, uh, businesses owned by folks of color that are um, uh, five employees or less, and that includes the business owner, um, and they don't know about the program, that deadline ends tonight, and you should give them a call and say, uh, uh, hey, Jim, uh, this, this, this program, uh, is, I'm sure you know about it. If you don't, uh, please make sure to get in your application. You have a chance um, to uh, provide some capital sh short term to your business. Yes, uh, thank you for for bringing that that one up. I I thought the deadline had already passed, so I we extended it. No, you were right. We extended it uh, because of the holiday. We extended it until uh, tonight at midnight. Wonderful. Well, yeah, we certainly will get the word out uh, and remind uh, remind our members uh, that that funding is available. So Great. thank you thank so you. much. We do have one comment in the chat, um, and it is basically uh, Paul said that his wife gave him the buzz cut, and he wouldn't recommend her services. So thank you, Paul. You might you might yeah. want to wait until your person is <laughs> opened right. up again. Thank you. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for for your time. Um, as always, uh, we are a chamber organization. We're here for networking and for opportunities to help our members 
uh, learn and uh, prosper by through convening people. So if anyone knows of any opportunities, uh, any job openings or any opportunities that our members could uh, benefit from, please feel free to reach out to the chamber. We can connect you. We can uh, provide those resources. And next week, we will be having uh, Jeff Soxie from UW Oshkosh talk about the uh, survey results that um, UW Oshkosh and our region, actually statewide, have really partnered on. Um, there's a lot of interesting things in that survey and uh, uh, some concerning news, but yet alone good data so that we can make decisions going forward. So I thank everyone for your time uh, and I hope you all stay healthy and that we get to meet in person soon. So take care everyone and have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, Sam.